Okay, so now we're going to put together hash chains and Merkle trees. So here we have a little Merkle tree of four values. So we initially, we take the four values, we hash them once, uh, and then we start forming a tree. Um, this is the Merkle root of this particular tree. And we'll assume that this happens we have these four menu, uh, messages, and they come to us at a certain point in time, okay? So maybe on a weekly schedule, a monthly schedule, maybe it's multiple times per day, it doesn't really matter uh, what this time schedule is, okay? Uh, so I'll just call this time one. And uh, then later uh, in the next time period, uh, we're gonna have another set of new messages Okay, and then another set, maybe another set. So we'll call this time one, time two, time three. Okay, so we have all these Merkle trees. So we have four messages in time one. We we use a Merkle tree so we get a single value. We have a single hash value here. Uh, then in time two, uh, we do the same thing. In time three, we do the same thing. And in time four, uh, we do the same thing, okay? And the trick uh, that we wanna do is we wanna make this kind of like a hash chain so that if you're interested in a message that happened in this batch of messages uh, in time two, then um, what we wanna do is we wanna make it so that you don't have to uh, get necessarily the Merkle root from time two, maybe you can get one later and you can kind of backtrack and make sure that it's it's correct, okay? So um, first off, just in terms of terminology, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to call this a block. So this set of messages you can think of as the block. We have the Merkle root is at the top. Maybe I'll just label the first box, okay? And uh, in order to, to do this hash chain, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to hash it with the previous value, okay? So we're going to take a hash of this and we're going to hash in uh, the, the previous value that we had. And the previous value we have, we're going to assume uh, it's also the hash of whatever the previous value was before. And eventually you go back to the start of the chain and the start of the chain will, will look a little different here. There'll just be one thing that goes into the hash instead of two things, okay? So in other words, what we'll do is we'll take the Merkle root and um, we'll hash it together with the previous thing. So uh, let's get some terminology here. So the hash of the Merkle root, which is sitting on this wire, with the previous thing of this is called a block header. Okay, so the block header is the hash of the previous block header plus the current Merkle root. Okay, so the current Merkle root and the previous block header uh, go into this uh, block header. And then similarly, we take this block header, we feed it in uh, with the Merkle root. And I'm not drawing arrows, uh, but, but maybe I'll just, I'll label a few of them just so that you know. So uh, the arrows are sort of going this way. So if you think of every blue dot as a hash function, um, the arrows are sort of going up. And then they're going from left to right, okay? Uh, so we take these two values, we feed it in uh, to the next Merkle root and we get the new block header. We take that block header and we feed it into the next uh, block. And then we're done. Okay, so we call this, uh, so this is the link timestamping uh, data structure. Uh, if you know about Bitcoin, you'll see that this actually looks a lot like a blockchain. In fact, a blockchain is this plus one other little twist uh, that we're going to add in a second. Um, and so you might be surprised actually to learn that this, this data structure is actually much older than Bitcoin itself. So, so people were talking about it in the 90s 
And uh, one of the companies, so not the, the Guard Time company, but there's another one called Surety that, that does the New York Times. They, they have a similar approach. Um, it was some of the people that were involved in, in that company were the people who had invented this technique uh, back in the 90s. It went under the name Link Time Stamping. Okay, now what's so great about this data structure? Well, it has all the advantages of the hash chain plus the Merkle root. Um, so basically what will happen is, um, let's say that you're interested in this transaction here. You're interested in specifically, um, was this thing actually committed? And maybe you're also interested in what time it was committed at. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about how to get this synchronized. So right now, this is still has the problem of hash chains where you can, you can do this whole data structure in one second, right? You could, you could do a thousand long chain uh, that, that you could just do it in one second. And, and so we have no notion of these things actually taking once a day or once a week, okay? Uh, unless if they're being published, say, once a week uh, in a newspaper. Um, but anyways, let's say that we're interested in just does this value show up in the data structure? I'm claiming that this value here is, is actually in the data structure, okay? So how would you validate it? Well, what you'll do is, uh, and let's say that what you have to work with is you just have the most current value, okay? So you have this committed value uh, of the most current time round, okay? What would you need to validate that this was actually in it? Do you have to download everything? Do you have to have all of the messages all the way across in order to validate that this only the this message, which is the only one that you're interested in, is actually contained in this particular value, and so the answer is no. You don't need all of them. Um, so what you'll need is you'll basically have to validate everything going backwards, but you only have to evaluate the immediate input. So the immediate inputs to this hash function is what's on this wire, okay, combined with what's on this wire, okay, and. If you have that, what's on this wire, what's on this wire itself, uh, it's a combination of what was on this wire uh, with what's what was on this wire, okay? What was uh, on this wire is the output of what was on this wire combined with what was on this wire, okay? And then now we're in the Merkle tree and so we're familiar with it, uh, but just to reiterate, uh, we can trace a path down to the Merkle tree, plus we're gonna have to grab every neighbor uh, of all these nodes on the way up, okay? So in order to validate that this node uh, is in this value, uh, all we need is we need the path, the complete path from this node to the value that we have, and then we also need every neighbor uh, because most of these are a hash function that takes two inputs, and so we need that other input to the hash function, okay? Um, but that's not bad. Uh, that's that's actually it's this is logarithmic in the number of things that happen to be published in time two, okay? And then it's linear in the number of blocks that you've added since. Um, and so so that's actually a fairly uh, efficient data structure. You don't have to download a lot of hashes. It sure beats having to download all of these things. And notice that the oldest value you need is actually just what's on this wire. Everything that happened before, like maybe this chain goes back 10 years, you don't need to know it in order to validate uh, this particular node. So you don't have to know the complete history of everything. You just have to backtrack to when this, this node was, was committed to, grab all the neighbor, neighbors, uh, and then you can validate that it's actually in this latest uh, value. So this is a, a sort of efficiency uh, technique uh, for selectively opening a commitment where you have a batch of messages and they're being accumulated over time. And Bitcoin will use this uh, sort of exact approach um, uh, later. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, but basically, sometimes you're going to have light clients, lightweight clients like phones and things like that, and they're not going to be able to download everything. Okay, but they still want some assurance that, that what people are telling them is true is actually true. And so they're going to use a trick like this uh, in order to validate that, that certain things are true without having to download a lot of information. So uh, this, this idea uh, ends up being uh, very, very important. Uh, sometimes this, this whole path, so this whole thing uh, we sometimes call the Merkle path. So let me uh, pencil in that uh, notation. 
we call it a Merkle path usually when it's within a tree, but even when it's within a tree and then within the bigger data structure of the hash chain, we just still call it a Merkle path. Um, so sometimes people might, the Merkle path might only be to this block header, and then they'll talk about this as being the set of block headers. So you get the blocks, the block headers, and then you get the Merkle path for the block that you're interested in. That's probably a little tighter in terms of terminology, a little more accurate. Uh, or you can, alternatively, you could think of the whole thing as, as the Merkle path, which is maybe a bit of a, abuse of the notation, but it gives you the same idea. Okay, so that's linked time stamping. This is the data structure. It's central uh, to blockchain. Um, next, what we're going to do is switch gears completely. We're going to talk about something not related to commitments anymore, and then we'll circle back uh, to this uh, data structure and we'll improve it in a few ways.